and, and then the, the interface to the, um, to, the, to the chip is, is wireless. So you have no wires poking out of your head. That's an advantage as well. One of the things I've always liked about my own head is that there aren't wires sticking out of it. <coughs> Big tech organizations are experimenting with putting microchips into monkeys' brains. This will definitely not bring about a dystopian Skynet disaster, will it? This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. Like, you know sometimes when you watch one of them zombie disaster movies and there's like a pre-title sequence where you'll see something like, so we were experimenting with putting microchips into macaque monkeys' minds and then it sort of shows you some desolate shot of New York with deer and wolves bowling about up subways and through Times Square and that. This is the kind of sense of foreboding I get here. Researchers are developing technology that can transfer data between computers and our brains, and even read people's minds. Neuralink, a company co-founded by Musk, is working to add a digital, quote, third layer above the cortex that would work symbiotically with you. Neuralink is just one player in an emerging field that could enhance human functionality. You've got to enhance human functionality. Let's see who we're entrusting with that. Facebook, <laughs> others include Facebook and startups such as CTRL Labs, backed by Amazon. Okay, so Facebook and Amazon, we, you know, the jury's in. We know what Facebook and Amazon are about. Great products to a degree, but profit-driven corporations. So let's think where they will take it. What will be the biases if companies like Facebook and Amazon are involved in the development of AI? Is it going to be your personal well-being or will it be profit? Big players like Elon Musk and Facebook have teased their entrance into the market. That market is expected to reach a value of $1.72 billion by 2022. Now, of course, people that are behind this, like Neuralink and Elon Musk, he says like this Neuralink will help people with brain disorders. And of course it will. But I don't think big business owners and their boardrooms are sat around thinking, how can we help people with debilitating brain diseases? That, that's not how big business operates, is it? Like Coca-Cola and Nike and Facebook and all these big brands don't have as their core values, how the hell do we help people with debilitating brain diseases? It's about whether it's sugary drinks, sports shoes or Neuralinks, money. It has to be about that. It's not a critique of individuals. It would be pointless to critique individuals within them, particularly a genius like Elon Musk. I'm saying the ideology itself warps society in a direction that is clearly a problem. Again, when you envisage the peripheral place we find ourselves in now, do you think the solution to these problems is going to come from big tech, entrepreneurs, geniuses operating in the spaces of ultra-capitalism, or do you think it might be something a bit more radical than that, i.e. do you think we should carry on doing what we're already doing more aggressively and quickly, or try something different? Doing precisely what we've done 18 times before is exactly the last thing they'll expect us to do this time. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone. He's learnt to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. I find that even if this is just a piece of visual information with no narrative behind it, I find it troubling to watch a monkey suck on a silver straw to have a banana smoothie. It feels to me like this is, we're not, this is not it. No, we've still, <laughs> we've not understood, you know, like the projection of a rainforest. The real rainforest, by the way, has to be annihilated in order to get the resources required to pursue these economic dreams. On some level, you have to trust your intuition, your inner tuition, the tutor within you, the teacher inside you that's saying to you, hey, this isn't the direction society should be going in. This is not what you're evolved for. There are higher things. Now, I'm obviously not seeking to diminish the great work that could be done for people with motor neurons disease or some other debilitating condition. If that is the true uh, purpose of such an endeavor, by all means, continue. But my suspicion is that ultimately what lies behind huge corporations that are designed in order to generate profit is the generation of further profit. And if that ingenuity overlaps occasionally with inadvertent benefits for someone from for whatever reason, they will happily use that as the branding and logo for the endeavor that is ultimately profitable. 
you see this happen every day in your life. This is how information is presented to you. This is how you are distracted. Now, I'm like not some mad Luddite fool, oh, let's stop all exploration. I'm aware of the microphone that is clipped to me, the computer, the camera, all of the products of the ingenuity of great people that went before. But at this point, not then, now, how should we be approaching the future, knowing what we know about our tendencies as animals, knowing what we know about the trajectory we seem to be on as a civilization and as a planet? What safe checks would you like to insert? What imperatives would you like to consider? What models would you like to pursue? One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favourite video game, Pong. I don't think the Keck monkeys really evolved to play Pong. Well, I like Pac-Man. And I also like Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, I'm a very big fan of Paperboy. But all told, I'd have to say <laughs> my favourite is Pong. You're anthropomorphising the monkey. You're economising, if I may say, or commodifying our time here on Earth. Consider the possibility that we may have access to dimensions beyond space and time. Consider we may be more than our most selfish impulses, our misguided greed and selfishness, survival instincts redirected by systems that require us to remain on low bandwidth engagement in order that we may not throw off the shackles and conformity of a system that requires our compliance. Once you've considered that, Think, do you want literal monkey tennis to be your future? <laughs> monkey tennis? <laughs> to control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. I've not actually got a criteria for judging Pager's ability. Hey, fucking hell, you're good at mind pong. Of all the monkeys I've seen playing mind pong, I'd say Pager's probably second, third or fourth best at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. Not really. He's got a fucking microchip inserted in his brain, and he's got to suck on the old banana pipe. Hey, I'm living the dream, baby! You know, a monkey has been able to control the computer with his brain. I, th I think there's, there's an incredible amount we can do to, to solve... Um, brain disorders, act, uh, damage. You think people of this level of intelligence don't have meetings when they say, for the public facing part of this operation, let's promote the idea that this is primarily gonna be used to help people because no one can argue with the benefits and the aspiration to help people with debilitating and immobilizing conditions. You think they don't have that chat? After solving a bunch of brain related uh, diseases, there is the, the existential uh, it's mitigation of the existential threat of AI. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So, uh, but th this, is, this is not a mandatory thing. Oh, thanks. You're not going to come around my house in the dead of night and fucking smash a microchip into me head like a techno hammer and chisel. Again, the suggestion that somehow humanity's needs might best be met by merging with AI seems to me to be a dubious assumption comparable to the mentality at the Reichstag that said, look, I'll tell you what we should do with Hitler. Put him in charge just for a couple of months and I'm sure he'll calm down. And I, I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years, uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Obviously, I'm not claiming to understand artificial intelligence. It's a huge subject that requires a finer mind than mine to unravel its complexity. But it would seem to me that ultimately it is a tool that requires humanity to construct and invent it. Although I understand because they are self teaching technologies that ultimately they would transcend the intelligence capabilities of their designers. We've all seen those films. But really, the fact is that human beings have access to realms that will remain inaccessible to entirely mechanistic beings, unless you believe, as many people do, that we 
are entirely mechanical, that we do not intersect with something beyond material on some level. If you believe that everything can be rationally explained, well, human beings, we developed love in order to have stronger social ties so that we could hunt antelope more efficiently. If you're willing to reduce everything, every sublime, divine, beautiful, poetic, artistic endeavour to some rudimentary, blunt pursuit of some bitter fruit or a blowjob, then of course it does make sense to yield to AI. But if you think that there is the potential for a great mystery at the essence of human beings individually and collectively, something that is beyond even our own understanding, if you consider that perhaps we are portals to something greater, that there is an object, a mind, a consciousness beyond our understanding operating beneath and around our limited perception, then these kind of pursuits are a further advance into an area that we've already extensively explored. What is the intention? What is the telos for humankind? Where do you see us going? And hopefully it is a benign scenario. Um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. I'm not going along for the fucking ride with a robot like it's short circuit. Where are we going now, Charlie Five? Get the fuck out of my roller coaster. We're humans. We've got to fight for humanity, sweet, glorious humanity. And we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. It, it will take a long time. <laughs> Whilst anyone speaking publicly has the right to deploy whatever tactics they want to get their message across, I have personal concerns about people being trite and glib about things that are potentially explosive and dangerous while ushering them into public life. Edward Snowden, in my recent conversation with him on my podcast, Under the Skin, talked about how in plain sight the real decisions are made, your savings being sucked away from you, an AI future being advanced, not sort of secretly behind a veil at Davos, but just here, plainly, with a smile and a wink and a bead of sweat on the forehead, a world where microchips are embedded in your consciousness and what that could potentially do to your already challenged autonomy is here, witnessable, observable by anybody. And for me, this is a matter of some solemnity and some concern. And I like a joke as much as the next chap. You really need this to be done with a robot because it's very tiny and it needs to be very precise. Okay, I've decided I am going to have the microchip fitted into me, Ed. Talk me through the process. Is it going to work? It involves just a, 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 two, mil, a two millimeter uh, incision bypassing uh, any vasculature, uh, you know, any, any kind of like blood vessel, um, uh, and, and making sure that, that it can be inserted w without causing trauma uh, or minimal trauma. Yeah, minimize the trauma while you're inserting it. Ah, some trauma! <laughs> some trauma happening. It's the minimum. And, and then the, the interface to the um, to the to the chip is is wireless, so you have no wires poking out of your head. That's an advantage as well. One of the things I've always liked about my own head is that there aren't wires sticking out of it. This um, I think has a very good purpose, uh, which is to cure important diseases um, and ultimately to help secure humanity's uh, future as a civilization relative to AI. Again, I suppose the agenda is being set by people that are in a particular position. I'm not trying to make an enemy of Elon Musk. I met Elon Musk once. He's clearly, unquestionably, a brilliant person. A brilliant person, though, operating within an economic framework. Also, might I contest that his genius is within a particular discipline. And we have this tendency, latterly, to think that there is a cross pollinization of genius. Oh, this guy's a genius in tech. Let's have him organise society. No, this person's a genius in tech, let's have him stick with tech and we'll handle society. In fact, no individual should be charged with such a potent and potentially dangerous endeavour. This is something that we're learning now can only be undertaken collectively. We are so diverse, we are so different. There's nothing wrong with any of our expressions of who we are and how we are and how we acculturate, acclimatise, express ourselves, as long as it doesn't hurt other people or the planet. Now, let's, where possible, decentralise and organise our personal realities and our collective realities along lines that are mutually respectful, beneficial and enjoy the glory 
the glory of life, the beauty of life, the tragedy of life, its transience, the irrefutable fact of death, the irrefutable fact of pain. Let's use science and technology to improve our experience here within limitations and without the constant agenda of the pursuit of profit. As long as the strata within which these ideas are forced to exist is ultimately a financial and economic one, there will be problems, particularly as that is predicated on a, on, on a materialistic worldview, i.e. things are mechanical, material and can be observed primarily and can only be in fact be observed, I mean that's the nature of them, from a mechanistic perspective and all that we can observe is all that there is. Well how much of your experience of life chimes with that? How much of your experience of life is about what is measured? How many times in life have you found yourself in a potentially apparently beautiful situation but felt sad? Because there are different layers to your reality. There are different experiences available in every single moment. We can create and control reality through inner experimentation, through spiritual evolution. This side of life cannot be neglected. Technology has its place, but it has to know what its place is. And its place cannot be determined by economic imperatives, particularly not at a time when the re-engagement of our spiritual and emotional life is so vital. And we, we hope to uh, have this uh, aspirationally in, in a human patient um, before the end of next year. Good, all right then, that's brilliant. All right, we'll have a human patient by the end of next year. A couple of years, we'll all be wandering around with microchips in our brain, unable to contest the decisions of tech giants or governments everywhere. Hey, is that fair that these tech giants are determining the direction of... Sorry, what were you saying? I was saying I'd like another game of peony pong with my little McKecky buddy. Well, where's my banana pipe, baby? I love the reality. This is something I think is gonna be really important um, at a civilization level scale. No one's querying the ingenuity of entrepreneurs and uh, tech geniuses like Elon Musk merely querying the unconscious agenda of powerful corporate interests in alliance with the corporate state. What we want ultimately is more agency for individuals, more power to the collective, not less, not less. And some of us have serious moral <laughs> queries about a makeki monkey sucking on a banana pipe with a microchip in its mind and whether or not that points to a glorious new future or a potential disaster. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And if you don't, I'm coming around your house in the night to stitch a microchip into your brain <laughs> that'll make you just sort of like with your elbow. Like, <laughs> subscribe, turn on notifications, join mailing list. You know, <laughs> enjoy your freedom. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. And for God's sake, sign up to our mailing list so we can communicate with you directly. Bloody hell, one minute we're talking about vaccine passports. The next minute it's microchips in your mind. All we need to do is cut off some of your genitals in order that you can live a free and happy life. <laughs> you keep them where they are, thank you.